and welcome to this series of video tutorials on using data color match pigment for matching and correcting color. In this video, I'll give you a quick tour of the color matching module, Formula Central. Then, I'll show you a reliable workflow that can be expanded easily and help you get the best results quickly. Alright, let's get started. Find the program shortcut to data color match pigment on your Windows desktop and open it to log in. Formula Central may be configured to automatically start, as you see here. If not, simply use the Go menu from Data Navigator. This is Formula Central. Like most windows, there's a menu, a toolbar, and a status bar. This area is for measuring, finding, storing samples and formulas. This is the formula grid. It's like a spreadsheet with rows for ingredients and totals, and columns for things like names, amounts, units, and cost. This area's content varies. Any extra parameters like thickness, opacity, or gloss will appear here. There's an evaluation panel that pops up here where you can see color differences in spectral graphs. To toggle the panel on or off, click this button or press F4 on your keyboard. There are also three helper windows that we'll use later on. One lets you select color and sets and ingredients. One is for changing preferences, and a third for comparing or sorting formulas. When Formula Central opens, it's ready to work. The program made a new match job from a template stored in my user profile. The name of the job and the template it came from shows here in the title bar. This template is for matching transparent colors over a substrate. We'll look at different templates and options later. For now, let's concentrate on workflow. Predicting a match formula, comparing and evaluating the predictions, correcting and refining our match, and finally storing a successful formula. Notice the match and correct toolbar buttons are disabled. The program knows we're missing some important information. We need a target. What color should we match? Type a name for the target and use the measurement button or the drop down to find a stored measurement. Once we've given a target color, the toolbar buttons come to life. Clicking this button, Auto Formulate, will use our saved preferences and show us a selection of predicted formulas. Results show in a multi-formula spreadsheet, useful for sorting and comparing pigment combinations. It's one of the helper windows I mentioned earlier. It shows one formula per column with ingredient amounts in the lower row and evaluations for sorting above. Click a combo box in the first column to select more comparisons for finer levels of sorting. Clicking inside a formula column will select it Closing the window will return to Formula Central's main window with your chosen formula. But double-clicking a formula is quicker. The other formulas haven't disappeared. Formula Central saves every step and every prediction in the job notebook. You can redisplay the multi-formula spreadsheet by clicking its toolbar button. For more detailed evaluations of a few formulas, I like to use the main window's evaluation panel along with the next formula and previous formula buttons. You can change the evaluation for coordinates to spectral curves using the View menu, but passing the cursor over this double line is a nice shortcut. Use the Next Formula button, compare the curve shapes, or the colorimetric evaluations. Once you've selected a prediction, you'll want to try it out. Click the Printer button in the toolbar or use the File menu to print your selected formula. In the lab, you can use your printed copy to record the actual amount you weighed or attach a sample of the formula's color if you like. Having made a sample of the prediction, I can use Formula Central to compare it to the target and refine the color match if it needs it. To start the process, just measure the trial sample. Type a name here then use the measurement button or the drop down to select a stored sample. The program recognizes that I've measured a new trial and configures the screen for a correction. 
The evaluation panel now shows color differences and a second spectral curve. The grid has a new column for the trial formula. It's preloaded with the target formula from the previous step. The program enabled the correction buttons in the toolbar. But before I click one, though, I want to be sure that the trial's ingredient amounts really are those that made the trial sample. Notice the spectral curves, ingredient amounts, and sample names are color-coded. Red for targets and green for trials. If you ever forget which is which, just look at the color in the name of the target box. To change the trial formulas, just click in a cell of the grid and type to replace or edit the amounts. Use the enter key to move from one cell to the next. Once all the amounts are right, I click a correction button and the system fills in the grid with new amounts. Here is the revised prediction. I selected reformulate so the new formula is the same size as the original. The column of differences has both positive and negative amounts. The color differences before the correction and after the correction are shown in the evaluation panel and the spectral curves for the predicted correction. As before, I can print this formula and repeat the process of making and evaluating the sample. I have my sample and have recorded the amounts I did make into the trial. Subsequent corrections work just like the first. Give the new trial a name, then use the measure button or the drop down. Verify the amounts in the formula grid and then click a button for correction. This time I pick the correction type addition. Notice that the new prediction total is larger than the previous and there are no negative amounts in the column for differences. Once I have an acceptable color match, I'll save the formula. Click this button, give the sample a name. I can pick any folder that I like and then click the Save button. With the standard formula safely stored for later use, our work matching this color is complete. We could review our steps by looking through the pages of the job notebook, our formulation, our reformulation, our correction, or press on to a new color match by starting a new job. In future videos, I'll show you more tips and ways to incorporate additional features into this basic workflow. For now, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching.